Critical Role has just announced something something absolutely crazy for Campaign 3. After the most recent episode of Campaign 3, episode 98, Critical Role has announced something that I have been waiting years for. A return... A return to the freaking Calamity. That is right, boys and girls. I'm talking EXU Calamity 2 Electric Boogaloo. Brennan, my king, my goat, is coming back. He's coming home to take us on a wild prequel ride of the Calamity once again. The grand war between gods and men. The war between the betrayer gods and prime deities in the critical role lore. A war that left two-thirds of the population of Exandria completely wiped out. And I'm absolutely buzzing. Hello everyone, I'm Finn. Welcome back to Finn Films. Join me today as we discuss Critical Role Campaign 3 Episode 98 as well as the upcoming return to easily the most interesting time period in all of Critical Role lore, The Calamity. Oh, and obviously guys, spoiler warning? So Critical Role Campaign 3 has been one hell of a ride over the last few years. It's had its highs, it's definitely had its lows, but man has it had some absolute peaks. I think what I love most about Campaign 3 of all of the Critical Role campaigns though, is the beauty of its long-term storytelling. I've done a whole video discussing the amazingness of Matt Mercer's long-term storytelling in Critical Role Campaign 3, make sure you go check that out, but again, Campaign 3 is this really amazing work of long-term storytelling, a long-term story that's been years in the making. Something like over seven years at least of real lifetime, as well as thousands of years of in-game lore time. In short, Campaign 3 tells the story of an existential threat to the world of Exandria, a return of a god-killing entity, an apex predator of sorts known as Perdothos, an ancient entity that once hunted the gods of Exandria, an entity that was only stopped by sealing it away in a chunk of Exandria, creating the planet's second moon, the Red Moon of Ruidus. Campaign 3 as a story is like extremely linked with the story of the Calamity, the ancient war between gods that left Exandria completely tattered and ruined, leaving two-thirds of the population of the world dead and thrusting Exandria into a kind of like dark age with much of the ancient arcane technology, as well as magical secrets and knowledge seemingly lost forever to time. Camping 3 as well is a real story of like subverted expectations, moral grayness, and plot twists. For the majority of the time of Critical Role, we have been led to believe that there is good and evil in this world. Two sides of morality manifesting themselves within the gods, the prime deities and the betrayer gods, respectively. However, though, with the recent events in Critical Role Campaign 3, specifically Campaign 3 Episode 98, the most recent episode at the time of recording, all of this is starting to come into question. As we know in our story, the brains behind the plot to release Predathos is none other than Ludinus Delath, an ancient elf archmage who has lived for over a thousand years, one of the last surviving people who witnessed the violence of the Calamity firsthand. This clash of the gods, as well as the downfall of the Age of Arcanum and the downfall of the magical flying cities, have caused Ludinus to become completely jaded with these divine beings, sending him on a path to rid them of the world via Perdothos. For the majority of Campaign 3, Ludinus is painted as this kind of classic big bad evil guy with this plot to destroy the gods as kind of a personal vendetta in order to, in his words, set the mortals of Exandria free. But you see, what if he's right? This kind of really brings us to our most recent episode of Campaign 3, episode 98, as our party venture into the ancient ruins of the city of Aeor, a once thriving mageocracy and flying city during the Age of Arcanum, a city that in many ways kind of flew too close to the sun. The city ultimately being struck down by the gods during the Calamity after they supposedly developed a weapon that could kill a god. The party has recently learned that Ludinus is searching for something within Aeor, Aeor being his ancient home city, something that could be the piece possibly to releasing Perdothos. So they have been sent there to try and stop him as we saw in the events of episode 98. In the climax of said episode, an amazing live show by the way, probably one of the best live shows Critical Role has ever done, the party is confronted by Ludinus deep within the destroyed halls of Aeor, but Ludinus, to our shock and our surprise, does not want to fight. 
he actually only wants to talk to the party and he wants to share something with them that he believes will change their perspective. This something is the Thalamus, a recorded spiritual memory of all of those within the city of Aeor. And within this memory is information that Ludinus believes will explain why he believes the mortals of Exandria have been lied to by the gods for over a thousand years. In Ludinus's words, history was written by the victors, and thus it was written by the prime deities. When the divine threatens you, they reveal themselves as the enemy. I was there in the final moments of the calamity. I saw the gods' fury. The few of us that survived struggled to live as they fled behind their gate. The world has been manipulated, duped by the gods. There's a reason the gods fear me. I found something equally important in Aeor. The most important weapon can at times be information. From here, our party are then transported into this shared memory, this almost shared consciousness of Aeor, when to my shock, who comes onto the stage but the god of DMing and improv himself, Brennan Lee Mulligan. Brennan dropping a little teaser for the return to the Calamity in Critical Role's newest miniseries, Downfall. Downfall is a return to the Calamity, similarly to Brennan's former time as a DM in Critical Role for the miniseries EXU Calamity, a miniseries that in my opinion is easily Critical Role's best content that they've ever made, and some of the most riveting storytelling that I've ever seen from a Dungeons & Dragons session of all things. However, this time they will be focusing on the end of the Calamity, the final moments of the Flying City of Aeor before it was then struck down by the gods, as within this story is seemingly world-changing information that our party Bell's Hells must learn, information that could change everything. This is what I'm talking about when I say that Campaign 3 is like long-term storytelling at its finest. It's not only a story that's been planned for like 7 plus years of real lifetime, it is a story that covers thousands of years of Exandrian history and how the fallout of the Calamity has shaped the story of Ludinus and thus Campaign 3. You see, this was all intentional. It was all planned out by Matt from the start. The choice to do the EXU Calamity miniseries with Brennan during the early arcs of Campaign 3 was super important as it introduced all sorts of information and lore that would become vital to this story that is currently being told now in Campaign 3. And here we are, what, two years later, making another return to the Calamity. You see, throughout this campaign, I've been kind of slowly sympathizing with Ludinus as a character. This is supposed to be the big bad evil guy, the main villain of this story, but I actually think that he might be right. Throughout Campaign 3 and EXU Calamity, we have learned that things are seemingly not as they seem in the Critical Role lore in the Critical Role history. Ludinus tells us that history is written by the victors. The victors in the Calamity were the prime deities and their followers. So if everything we've learned so far about Exandria, literally in the lore since Campaign 1, has been wrong, what if the gods are then not these all-powerful entities that we are led to believe, but are much more closer to mortals than we might imagine? Ludinus is right when he says the gods fear him. They fear him the same way that they feared his brothers of Aeor in the days of the Calamity, as well as the many other mages in the flying cities during the ages of Arcanum. We know that during this time in the Age of Arcanum, advances in magic had reached an incredible height. Mages were drawn by their ambition to push the limits of magic to push their potential, to reach higher and higher than they ever have before. As such, one of these mages reached so high that she actually achieved godhood. The ascension of the Raven Queen to godhood in the Age of Arcanum is one of those kind of like watershed moments. The ascension itself showing that really there isn't much difference between mortals and the gods that created them. We also learn as well during EXU Calamity that many of the gods, specifically Asmodeus, were not pleased with the mortals receiving magical powers, whether it be divine magic or arcane magic during the time of the founding. Asmodeus fearing that this power that was given to them might eventually put them on an equal playing field to the gods, and Asmodeus seemingly saw this. The many mages of the Flying City in the Age of Arcanum had seemingly narrowed this gap between mortals and gods to almost a minuscule degree, the Raven Queen showing us that it was actually possible for a mortal to ascend to godhood. The mortals then in this point were no longer these children of the gods, but in many ways almost their equals, and this seemed to very much scare said gods. The Lord of the Hells goes. <laughs> 
<laughs> You're telling me that the god of death is a mortal. <laughs> I hate to say I told you so! You see, he says, well, I cannot wait to meet this matron of ravens. <laughs> to think if they just listen to us and not given magic to them. My sibling whose name I can no longer remember might still be here. So then when it was rumored during the calamity that the flying city of Aeor had done the unthinkable, had developed a weapon that could possibly kill a god, enough was enough. Aeor was struck down from the skies along with the many other flying cities, their secrets of arcane magic and advancements in technology seemingly being lost forever with them. No longer would this gap between mortals and gods be small, the world then would then enter into an almost arcane like dark age period post calamity, the many followers of the prime deities in Vasselheim shaping and rebuilding the world along with the writings of history writings that we have learned seemingly can't be trusted to be unbiased and possibly wholly accurate. This, I think, is the message that Ludness is really trying to convey to the party and to the world through the Downfall miniseries, along with some other, I'm sure, big important revelations which we haven't seen coming and will probably completely take me by surprise. The Downfall miniseries seemingly following the final days of the Calamity and seemingly the Downfall of Aeor, and I can only imagine what truths and epic plot reveals will be revealed from this mini-series that will quite possibly change the critical role lore forever. If it isn't obvious, I, I absolutely love this story. I'm a complete like nerd and sucker for like long-term deep storytelling and lore and world building, something that Matt Mercer is like an absolute master of. Episode one of the Downfall miniseries is set to air on July 11th and will be DM'd by the GOAT himself, Brennan Lee Mulligan. The cast of the story featuring Laura, Talison, Ashley, as well as special guests, Nosher Dalal, Nick Marini, and Abu Bakar Salim. If the events of EXU Calamity are any indication of like how good the Downfall miniseries is going to be, then good god folks, we are going to be locked into Brennan's wild ride and I don't think that I want to get off of it. I don't think I'm overhyping it when I say that EXU Calamity is like the best content that Critical Role has ever made hands down. It really is that f***ing good. From the absolute peak acting performance of all of the cast, the absolutely like epic DMing of Brennan Lee Mulligan, some epic improv was in EXU Calamity. I'm talking like top top tier improv acting. So if that's anything to go on, on for how like the calamity started imagine how insane it will be seeing the story of the downfall of aeor i'm absolutely buzzing i've been desperate for both the return of brandon lee mulligan to the critical role dming seat and as well for a return to another prequel series of the calamity as there's just like so much insane lore and storytelling that can be mined in the calamity i hope they continue to do other calamity like prequel like mini series in the future because like <laughs> It's just so goddamn good, man. I mean, imagine like how drastically the story and the world of Critical Role is possibly going to change once the Downfall miniseries is all said and done. As always though, guys, with videos like this, these are just my nerdy thoughts and nerdy opinions. So please let me know yours in the comment section down below. If you did enjoy this video, then please make sure you like, comment, and subscribe as that is the easiest way to support me and to help put these videos into the algorithm. If you did enjoy this video, then want to check out some of the other content on screen now. As always, guys, thank you again for watching. Drink your water, hug your mother. Until next time, peace, love, auto.